welcome to module 57 of nptel noc an introductory course on point set topology part 2 continuing with the study of homo uh, continue study of manifolds today we we'll take uh, topic homogeneity you might have come across with the word homogeneous in a different context like group action on on a set and so on on a space on a space and so on so here is something that i understand a topological space is called homogeneous space if there is a group acting on it and action is transitive okay so transitive means what there is one single orbit given any two points there is a group uh, element g which will map this point to that point g of x equal to y that is the kind of thing in this section we shall be interested in transitivity of the action on x what is the group the group is the largest group we can think of namely the group of all homeomorphisms of the space in a topological space when you take group actions you would like to take them through homeomorphisms namely each multiplication by g must be a homeomorphism continuous automatically homeomorphism of course so the best thing is to take the space of all homeomorphisms okay under the composition it will form a group all right so uh, you can look at that group acting on the space x is it homogeneous is it uh, transitive is the question the answer is yes in the case of manifolds so let us see uh, how good it is the transitivity has many other ramifications here so we begin with the simplest object namely open disk our model for manifold take any two distinct points in the interior of this, this dn interior i have also denoted it by bn right so ball of radius strictly less than 1 now okay open ball then there exists a homeomorphism f from dn to dn such that f of p equal to q and f of x equal to x for all x on the boundary on the boundary its identity and the p is mapping to q you might have heard such things inside uh, complex analysis when you have, when you have uh, studied complex analysis okay there you have even the c c uh, complex differentiable such functions here we are doing it for dn and we don't have the strong uh, structure of complex analysis so the proof is quite straight forward namely uses the convexity of dn for any y inside dn interior let us write on phi y from sn minus 1 cross open 0 1 close to is tn minus y y is an interior point okay you throw away that so take this function phi i of a vector v v is a vector inside sn minus 1 unit vector comma t goes to 1 minus t times y plus t times v note that this phi y is a homeomorphism okay verify this is just i am taking look at this when t is 0 it is y okay it is v yeah uh, it is y the y that i have thrown away all right this when t is 0 it is y so that zero is not there after all when t is 1 this is v okay so it is actually the line segment joining v and y 
the open line segment the y itself is not there okay so that is a uh, it should give you one one mapping and all that you can actually write down the inverse image here inverse map every point that is all that is the convexity of this one okay so this is a homeomorphism also note that when t tends to 0 this phi y of v t tends to y so that limit is y for all v inside some numbers so i could have extended it by sn minus 1 cross close interval 0 1 and then this y would also come inside but of course then it will not be a homeomorphism all right because all the points v would have gone to the single y here so now take psi p q depends upon two points this for arbitrary y we have to now p and q are both in, in the interior point so one is from d n minus p to t n minus q what you do phi p inverse composite phi q so from here you come to here and then come back here okay so automatically if you take x going to p now instead of 0 t going to 0 the same thing as x going to p psi p q will be equal to q so i can extend this psi from d n to d n it is defined from d n minus p to d n minus q now take p to q that will be a continuous extension okay exactly same way we can define psi of q p it will be what phi p composite phi q inverse so on rest of the points it is the inverse inverse of this one and then finally it will have the property that q will be mapped to p therefore this psi q p will be actually the inverse of phi q p because we have verified that these two are okay the continuous functions it will follow that psi p q is a homeomorphism but clearly on the boundary on the boundary if, if you take this one where does this go this will go to s n minus 1 cross 1 here and then it will map to the boundary again so on the boundary this is just actually identity psi p q is identity for all x Okay, so you know how to construct a homeomorphism like this. All right. So here's picture. What it does? Each line segment like this will be mapped to a line segment like that. The points on the boundary they are kept fixed. This is psi p q. So this p will be mapped to q, and then extend the map like this by taking line segments that is all. So, this is the homogeneity of the disk namely any point in the interior goes to any point any other point in the interior by a homeomorphism of the entire disk. In particular it is homeomorphism of the open disks also because on the disk it is identity that is extra hypothesis here. Okay, so that extra hypothesis is going to help us very much now. Namely, the homeomorphism is identity on the boundary. So next lemma is you take any manifold and a path omega from A B to X. Okay, so such a thing is called a path, a continuous function, that is all. Take A to be the image of that path and V be an open subset which contains that. Then there exists a path connected open set U in X such that U bar is compact and A contained inside U contained inside U bar contained inside V. If you do not worry about path connectivity, this is just regularity because A is compact being the image of a, a interclosed interval under a continuous function. This is compact, V is open, so you would have got this one by regularity. But 
how do you get uh, this one is path connected uh, there you have to use that a is path connected okay and and what and x is a manifold it is not to be in anywhere else x manifold means it is locally path connected so let us see the proof this is a proof each point y belong to a choose a coordinate neighbor to ui of y such that ui contained inside ui bar contained inside u by the compactness of a it follows that a is contained inside finitely many uis so call that as u so this u is union of finitely many what coordinate neighbor road coordinate neighborhoods are homeomorphic to open disks right or open the whole of r n whatever you want to say therefore all of them are path connected why the union is path connected because they have the a here which is path connect contained inside that okay a union u y 1 u y 1 is path connected U Y one intersection A is non-empty because U Y one covers some portion of A, right? I have chosen. I won't take anything which is not intersecting A. There is no need for that. So you have to take only those which intersect. They cover this one. Okay. So if they are redundant, you don't have to take them. So you can take this one such that each U I, U Y I intersects A. then a union that will be connected path connected okay a union this union with another one intersection with a that is a common path connected set so 2 by 2 you can go on so this whole thing is path connected let u be a connected open subset of x and p and q belong to u connected open subset of x okay there exist an open subset v such that v is inside v bar inside u such that v bar is compact and a homeomorphism of x to x of the whole space such that p goes to q fx is identity outside of v you see so many things are now are combined together two points are taken in the manifold inside a connected open subset they will be mapped one to the other by a homeomorphism which is identity outside a smaller open subset and this smaller open subset of course contains both pq and you can assume that is compact so such maps have such homeomorphisms are called homeomorphisms with compact support support means what here points wherein fx is not equal to y and then it's closed here so that is compact outside that compact subset the map is identity okay so this is the proposition not very difficult now because we have made the two important uh, proposition prop lemmas here which are which are actually what you can say preparatory things so this is also a more preparatory may say but it builds upon that one start with you know you have a connected open subset of x where x is a manifold so it is locally path connected therefore this path connected so start with a path joining p and q then cut down this path into finitely many portions t1 t2 tk such that each segment omega of ti ti plus 1 is contained in an open subset ui such that ui bar is homeomorphic to dn this like coordinate charts here 
and use this one compact and there will be finitely many of them like just like you can make it into a partition like this such that each segment is contained in one of them. These UI bars are homeomorphic here and all of them happening inside this open subset. Okay, you are not going outside the connected open subset here, here. From the previous lemma, for each 0 less than i less than k minus 1 up to here, we get a homeomorphism psi pi comma pi plus 1, that is pi going to pi plus 1 from ui to ui because these uis are homeomorphic to dn. So, take the image of these okay, uh, uh, omega ti's whatever omega ti's okay, call them as pi and get, take a homeomorphism there and come back, come back to ui, why are these homeomorphisms? So, you get a psi i pi i pi plus 1, you have to have such that psi i pi i pi plus 1 of pi is pi i plus 1, okay, which is identity on the boundary of u i. Extend each of them identically outside u i. So, for each u i, this psi i is outside the u i, which is identity. So, each of them you can extend it to the whole of space by putting identity extend each of them identically outside ui on the whole of x. After that, take u equal to union of these uis left equal to the composition p naught to p1 and p1 to p naught and pk minus 1 to pk. Okay. Composition. So, this will map p naught to p1, the second one will map p naught to p1 to p2, last pk minus 1 to pk, the composition will map P1 to Pk. Okay, what are these Pks? If you start with uh, uh, omega naught, this is P naught. Omega one is your Q is Pk. So these are uh, omega of uh, Ti. Omega of Ti is Pi. Here is an example. For Rn, the translations can be used to take any point to any other point. Okay, if you have v and a u, another vector, t translation by u minus v, okay, maybe u minus v, u minus v will take v to u, v minus v will take v to u, that is all. But translations do not have compact support, right? They will translate everything or they will not translate anything. <laughs> that is the identity. In the above result, we get homeomorphism with compact supports doing the same job. There is no assumption of, of course, it is true for R and also for any manifold you have proved. Okay. In case of R, one can directly write down a piecewise affine homeomorphism with compact support as follows. So, I want to do this one R n by hand, by not by using any theorem. And that will be very useful also. Okay. So, this is where it is. We know that for any two points, pair of points P1, P2, Q1, Q2 in R, there is an affine homeomorphism P1 going to P2, Q1 going to Q2. This we have used already in the, in the proof of this uh, color neighborhood theorem and so on, such that so, P i is mapped to Q i, i equal to 1 and 2. So, I have indexed it map by this P 1, P 2, Q 1, Q 2. Okay. It is a formula is there. So, you see all that you have to do is Q 1 minus Q 2 times x plus Q 1 P 2 minus P 1 Q 2 divided by P 1 minus Q 2 polynomial map. This is you know there are much more stronger things are there by interpolation formulas, Lagrangian, you know, there are polynomial maps and so on. This is just an elementary thing here, the linear one. May I mean doing the same job, namely one point at a time, one point going to one point. Uh, sorry, two points. Two points are mapped to corresponding points. Okay. Now, given arbitrary PQ, Q 
choose A less than B such that P and Q are inside AB. And define G from R to R by instead of one single parameterization, what I am going to do? I will break it into this x outside I mean, less than a it is identity i want a compact support right these these things don't have compact support they are you know linear maps so the polynomials they they don't have compact support so i want to get a compact support so cut off less than equal to a and a okay then you take this affine map which maps a to p and what uh, a less than x less than p okay f p so let me see what what i am doing here this is a one see a a is kept a to a but not a to p huh? p to p 0 goes to p to q so this p q here p goes to q and then b goes to b beyond this it is identity map so is this diagonal is you know xx here beyond here also is xx okay so that is the map this is what i want to so p and q have been mapped p to q and a to whatever okay but outside b and outside this part it is identity map so this is all why i want p has gone to q that's all below a it is identity map below b it is identity map okay you can use that so what should be the name here a to a that is correct a to a then p to q okay then p to q and b to b that is the correct uh, notation here all right so if we want to prove improve upon this result we may run into difficulty in one dimensional case improve upon this one means for instead of two points suppose you have three points and a three point set and another three point set can you map that if f is a homeomorphism such that f minus 1 is 1 and f1 is minus 1 then f is strictly decreasing function and hence we cannot have compact support Moreover, we do not have any homeomorphism f from f to r such that f0 is less than f r bigger than f1. All that I am telling is a homeomorphism has to be either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. Therefore, if you start with a number of points more than 2, you will have to take them in order you can't just shuffle them a b c cannot be mapped to a prime b prime c prime unless either a b c are strictly increasing and the other one is strictly decreasing or increasing both of them is possible but it has to be ordered okay if it is uh, increasing here and decreasing there you can take an in, uh, monotonically decreasing function otherwise you will have to take monotonically increasing function that is all. Okay. So, the moment you have more than 2 you know, in each uh, in each set, say k set k greater than or equal to 3, then you will have to have, have uh, uh, extra condition there. But if you take r2, r3, r4 and so on, there is no order there, therefore no restrictions there that is the beauty. So, whatever it is, this discussion, this kind, this kind of patching up of, of uh, fine linear maps of this nature, P1 going to P2, Q1 going to Q2. Okay. So, this can be used much uh, uh, for many uses and much use it has. So, let me uh, have a result here which we will use later on in the classification of one manifold. So, what you are here is start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. Okay. 
arrange them in the increasing order i have denoted them by a hat a a prime b prime b and b hat you can use any number any notation a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 also so take this number suppose you have a homeomorphism f from ab to u g from alpha b to v okay homeomorphism u and v are some spaces okay but this is homeomorphism these are intervals here where u is contained inside v are any two open subsets of any space x one is contained inside the other is the only condition okay and both of them are homeomorphic intervals one is parameterized by this f another is parameterized by g and there is no relation between ab and alpha beta but these are these are coming from here okay now what is the statement then there exists a homeomorphism from this a hat to b hat okay a hat which will cover the entire of v okay and restricted to a prime to b prime it is f we start with this f it is covering only u which is upset okay now the new new map f hat from a to b hat will cover the whole of v okay v is homeomorphic to ab alpha beta uh, interval but this homeomorphism can be chosen to be the given homeomorphism you know, on a smaller subset that is the important thing here f is already given homeomorphism on a smaller subset ab now a at b at is a larger open subset right of ab so on this side v is a larger open subset of v or subset from u right so so this homeomorphism is getting extended to larger interval to larger open set so that is a proposition okay so let us see how it's not very difficult at all take alpha prime equal to g inverse composite f of a prime and beta prime equal to g inverse composite f of b prime notice this term i take f of a prime and b prime are smaller open subsets here right smaller than a and b on that i don't want to change this f at all so look at the image of those two elements f of a prime f of b prime they are inside u so they are inside v so therefore i can take g inverse of that so g inverse of those things will be between alpha and beta so that is all i am writing here alpha prime is this number and beta prime is that number depending upon whether g inverse of f is orientation preserving or reversing we have two cases namely this alpha prime may be less than beta prime or beta prime may be less than alpha prime i have no control that will depend upon whether g composite f is orientation preserving or reversing okay but in either case they are in the interval alpha beta right so i have taken first f and then taken g inverse so they are in the domain of g alpha beta so there are two cases accordingly i will define two different homeomorphism f hat okay so first let us define a homeomorphism h from a hat b hat to alpha beta so let us do the work in inside r first and then go to arbitrary spaces okay so this is what we are familiar with h from a hat b hat to alpha beta by the formula a hat is mapped to alpha a prime is mapped to alpha prime this is my f this is linear isomorphism linear map okay linear homeomorphism a fine linear homeomorphism so this map is between a hat to a prime the second one is just g inverse of ft wherein i don't want to change my f namely on a prime b prime so it's a between a prime b prime 
it is gene or set case. The third one is again, this is cutting off things we are created, f of b prime to beta, beta prime, b had to beta. So, end points going matching here. Here, end points matching on this side. This part was the in between things. Okay? So, that will happen in beta prime less than or equal to t less than or equal to b, beta, uh, b hat. So, they agree because of the definitions of these things. So, h t is a homeomorphism. Okay? This h is from here to here is a homeomorphism. Now, all that I do is, okay. So, once, once I do that, all that I do is take f to be g composite h. Okay. On this interval, what happens? g, g cancels out, it will be f t. So, f hat is f t on this interval. Okay. So, there is another case here. In the other case, what you have to do? You have to take these two outside things differently because it is monotonically decreasing this part. This one is monotonically decreasing part. So, in the middle, the, you have taken this one only. But here, the things have changed their role. So, you map a hat to beta, a prime to alpha prime. Here, you had a hat to alpha, you see. So, here you have to meet a hat to beta. Similarly, here you have to b prime to beta prime, b hat to alpha. Okay, so, change the order, that is all. So, again, when you take f at g composite h, see, f g h was from a hat b hat to alpha beta, right? The g is alpha beta to v. So, this is homeomorphism, g is homeomorphism, h is homeomorphism, so thing is homeomorphism. Okay? So, we will continue the homo study of homogeneities next time. We will do something really marvelous next time for general manifold using these ideas from real numbers. Okay, thank you.